So he took me to Isaiah 58, the great fasting chapter, if there can be such a thing as a great fasting chapter. If you like fasting, you're unique. I get the, let me rephrase it. The, the, cha the, the chapter is great. The fasting is a pain. It's not great at all. You don't have to like it to do it, right? But one of the things that it can accomplish is healing history. Now, I'm not teaching on fasting tonight. I'm trying to just tell you the context of this verse because he says to Israel here, and I'm going to say it to all of us, he says, one of the things that can happen from this in verse 12, those from among you will rebuild the ancient ruins. In other words, I don't want you to just bulldoze this stuff over out of the way and start over. Sometimes you just have to do that. But when our history is concerned and generations are concerned, he wants some things rebuilt. But sometimes you can't get to your tomorrow destiny without yesterday. Where is the Lord God of Elijah? Maybe the power I need for today is found in my yesterday. Maybe if I want a double portion, I better connect with yesterday. Maybe if I don't want to curse on a generation, I have to connect with the fathers and the mothers. And maybe if I don't, Malachi said, a dislocation comes and curses flow through history, not blessing. So far, so good. Are you tracking with me? So he said, you'll rebuild the ancient ruins. You'll raise up the age-old foundations. That which is good, I don't want it bulldozed. I want you to reconnect and raise up. You'll be called the repairer of a breach. Another word for a dislocation would be a breach. History experiences breaches and now life can't flow through that place because something happened there that cut off the blessing. You'd be called the repair of the breach, the restorer of the streets in which to dwell. Then, as a practical application of this, one day I was, this was many years ago, probably close to 2000, I was ministering at Christ for the Nations and at a Bible school in Dallas. It was referenced this morning as a part of the, there are, Christ for the Nations at one point was probably, it was one of the most significant centers for what God was doing in the earth, in all the earth. And a lot of the roots of it come from right here. And we heard that this afternoon, Arkansas. But I was there ministering and I was praying, Lord, get this place back to the fullness of why you created this place. So I felt like they'd lost some things. And I was doing it publicly because everybody knew that it was, that was true. It's not like the place was in sin. It was just that what God had put in Gordon Lindsay's heart that he wanted to do there with the signs and the wonders and the prayer and just all the, it had lost some of its strength. And so the Lord just said to me that morning, I want you to give your session to, inter to praying for, this, for that to be restored rather than just teach. And so I was up leading in prayer and I heard the Lord say to me, I want you to agree in prayer with Gordon Lindsay. Well, he'd been dead for 30 years. And I said, I don't think we're supposed to try to communicate with the dead. I'm not sure I can do that. It must not be God. And it was one of those duh moments for me when the Lord said, well, his prayers aren't dead. And I said, well, I knew that. So then he said to me, 
until this generation comes into agreement with what I promised him I would do and what he asked me to do. Now listen, because this is what he said to me. Until that happens, until this generation comes into agreement with what I promised him, what he asked me, I cannot. He'd say I won't. He said I cannot do what I promised him I would do. And then he reminded me of Hebrews 11, which we've heard about today. Hebrews 11, the great hall of faith. All of the great things that men and women of faith accomplished. Some of it through difficult, painful persecution. And we heard about it last night, I believe. But then he says to us, there are some who were great people of faith and did not receive what I promised. Which seems a bit contradictory at first. Well, if he said it and they believed it, why didn't they get it? But he tells us the reason in 30, verses 39 and 40. They gained approval through their faith, but they didn't receive what was promised because God had provided something better for us that apart from us, they could not be, and here's the word, apart from us, they could not be, and it's a very strong word, finished, brought to fullness, one definition, mature. What I started in them cannot be matured without you. Some things I've decided that I'll start in one generation and I'll mature it in the next generation. Finish is a good translation. What I started with them can't be finished without you. One definition was reach its intended goal. Isn't that amazing? What I promised them, and what they started, cannot reach its intended goal without the next generation. And that's when he started talking to me about the katartizoing of the ages. I was just in prayer one day and I heard this grinding of gears. I said, Lord, what am I hearing? And he said, I'm... I'm letting you hear in the spirit realm. I'm giving you an example of what it would... He's using a sound to show me what was happening. He said, the ages are trying to connect. But like a, like a gear ship, like the, the, the clutch is not working right. The gears are just trying to... The ages are trying to connect and some things are going to have to happen so that the Qatar t can take place. That go over your head, you get that? Okay. I know I did that really quick. But he said to me, I can't do what I talked to this man about 30 years ago without agreement from this generation. I can't finish what I started. Then he said to me, you, you, you see this disconnection. You don't understand how history is connected and, and how the ages are supposed to be connected, and they, even if they're disconnected, then something's still flowing through there, pain and curses. But something's always flowing, that's what he said to me. But he said, I will give a promise to a person and say, I'm going to do this through you. Knowing that I'm not going to do it through them directly, I'm going to do it through their great, 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 great grandson. But when I do it through great, 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 great grandson, I'm doing it through them as far as I'm concerned. They said, I'm going to do this and this and this and this and this with you, Abraham. And then he comes to him later in another vision and says, by the way, that'll be 400 years. Because it really won't be through you. Well, it will be through you, but it's going to be through Isaac and Jacob and the 12 sons and the nation. 
But as far as I'm concerned, when I do that through them, in fact, what I do, when, when Messiah comes, I'm doing it through Abraham. 